In Devs, Sonoma Mizuno plays Lily, a young software engineer who believes that her boyfriend has been murdered at the hands of the secretive Devs division of a Silicon Valley quantum physics company. That is really just the most superficial explanation of the show because he's so much deeper than that. And it's about yeah. a whole bunch of topics like grief and love and um, free will. Um, so now, yeah, I found Devs to be a really moving and thought provoking experience about grief and motivation and faith and things like that. What did you ultimately take away from your experience on the show? Well, ultimately take away. I think I'm, well, I'm glad you said that about grief and love, because for me, that was the thing that I felt kind of most, um, I guess kind of most proud of in in the show was the way in which um, it really examined grief and love and um, examined the way it kind of, you know, motivated people and destroyed people and shaped people. And um, I think I felt like this was a really, a really kind of truthful exploration of that. And, um, and it's not something that comes along very often, you know, it's not, it's often something that's kind of glossed over in, in TV or film, what have you. Um, so, so that was kind of the thing that I felt was like, oh, it was a, it was a big takeaway for me, but it was also what I knew going into it as well. Yeah. I mean, you've worked with Alex before, obviously, on Ex Machina and Annihilation. So I assume mm -hmm. it was a no-brainer for you to sign on to this or at least go for the role. Was that, was that like your attitude? Like, yep, yeah, if Alex is doing it, I want to be a part of this. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, for actors, you, you know, we're doing auditions all the time and, and you have to go in with a kind of attitude that if I don't get it, I don't get it. It was never mine in the first place. But with this one, I think because I had worked with him and his team twice already, I knew kind of, you know, what the environment was, what the work was like, what the work ethic was like. And, and I felt, you know, if I don't get it, I, I do have something to lose. So, so I was definitely kind of like, yeah, I, I need to get this job. It's nice that you, you did get it because it's a nice little uh, kind of continuation of your collaboration with him. It's so fitting for Alex, anyone who doesn't know how he works, he's a very collaborative filmmaker. He brings this mm -hmm. army of collaborators with him, doesn't he? Like designers and musicians and artists and, and actors. Uh, and he creates the look and sound of his shows that are extremely unique and audacious. Um, and speaking of, did anything in particular stand out to you in terms of the visual and oral aesthetic of this show? Because it really is very unique um yes i mean i think uh i mean all of it is difficult to say well uh, uh, i guess the cube um the well the walk into the cube the trees with the halo lights which was kind of an amazing thing because that was um I, you probably know not actually in the script but um it was something that you know everybody kind of came up with when we were in the forest and they were all kind of discussing or, or i don't know but it was it was during production or pre-production i think um so that was kind of that was really amazing but i think the most impressive space was was the queue because it was a, a live space you know we, you could walk into this this gold room you you we went across that floating elevator which you know obviously wasn't floating but it felt like it was floating when you were going across it and and then this amazing building which housed this beautiful machine which looked like a sculpt a uh, sculpture and it was it was just like um it was just unbelievable like breathtakingly beautiful it, as a live space it was kind of like going to an interactive exhibition or something like that yeah it really was it's something it's really quite unforgettable it's one of the highlights of the uh, of the series the other highlight is obviously the um, the thematic elements the narrative that we slowly learn about as the series progresses. I thought we would do a bit of a deep dive in some of your highlight scenes. Um, probably one that you talk about a lot 
is in the second last episode when you and Katie, played by Alison Pill, are sitting across from each other on the table, uh, at the table mm. of Horace's home. Uh, she's explaining the rationale behind the machine, determinism and fate, with the rolling of the pen. And there's not a lot, there's, it's, it's a really reserved scene, but it's extremely impactful. Can you take us back to the scene and why do you think it was so effective? Um, I think, you know, I, I, but personally, I love scenes when I'm watching things, which are just two people sitting in a room talking. They can be really effective if they are, um, you know, talking about interesting things and the, the dialogue is great and it's uh, shot in a beautiful way. The kind of simplicity of it is very powerful. Um, I think, you know, part of it might have had to do with the fact that it was um, Alison and I, and we were, we were the, the two women who were having this very um, highly intellectual and interesting conversation. And, and the guys had kind of gone out and gone to play with the frisbee. It's kind of like a um, subtly jarring, unusual dynamic. And I, it, I think it's, you know, kind of like draws you in. Um, but the, it's all kind of like, it's all in the writing, you know, it's all, it's all there. And I remember the first time that Alex and I had a conversation about, um, free will and he he basically we basically had that conversation you know if you roll a pen and blah 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 and um it's it 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 also allows the re, uh, the the audience to kind of be with lily because she's not she's not um on the defense you know she she wants to know she wants to understand what's going on and and up until this point she she doesn't she doesn't understand she hasn't known what's going on so this is the point in the series where it kind of flips and she realizes that this thing that had been going on which was about her boyfriend that had been murdered is actually so much bigger than that it is it is about everything it is about the nature of existence on the human planet and it's also about her and those two things are just so enormous that it's um it's extremely riveting i think it really is like you know the concept uh, when, when it was said on the show um determinism is a trial if it works and it precludes free will and you're absolved if it doesn't work, then you're guilty and you're damned. That really resonated with me because I'd never really given that a lot of thought and it kind of blew my mind a little and I started thinking about it and reading about it. Did you have the same reaction when you started learning about these concepts? Did it kind of blow your mind? Were you already familiar with it? What's the story there? I was, I was, you know, kind of familiar with it, but not really. And it wasn't until, you know, we were having conversations about this pro project once I had signed on that I really started thinking of it in that way too. And, and it is kind of mind blowing because it, it kind of changes the whole structure of the way we as humans, you know, interact with each other and go about our days. Because what does it mean if, you know, it was always determined that, that someone was going to become a drug addict and then steal things from a shop or do a violent act, you know, does it mean that they are a morally bad person? Maybe actually it doesn't. It means that this happened in their childhood and this happened in their mother's childhood and so on. And, and then what does that mean for, for our kind of prison systems and, and our rehabilitation systems mm. and that kind of thing. So it's kind of like this endless, um, this endless, you know, thought provoking argument that um, is very kind of typical of, of Alex's work, basically. <laughs> That's without yeah. a doubt. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, the beauty of it as well is um, Lily goes through this existential reckoning. So she discovers the truth about Debs. And she says, I, th I wrote this down and I've got it on my screen. She says, I don't know what I am anymore. Something that makes no decisions, makes no choices, follows a path you can't see, not even choosing the words I speak now. That is very, that is so hard to grasp for someone with a brain like mine. And, 
And, I, and I'm just wondering, like, you've got to play a character who is being given, like, the, the truth about existence, so to speak. And then you've got to... Then what, what happens is she shatters that construct, which to me was so brilliant in the way that the series ended. So I'm just wondering, what were your thoughts on her journey on taking in all that information but being the cause of that construct being completely destroyed by the end? Because I'm still grappling with it in my head. <laughs> well, it, yeah, I know, me too. I mean, you can continue to grapple with it because um, whether that action that Lily did was all, always determined is questionable or not. You know, it could be part of her um, determined train track, so to speak. So um, you could be questioning it, it forever. But um, I think the interesting thing is, you know, she's so kind of, she's so in charge of her own actions or feels like she is. And she makes decisions which are very singular to her and she, she goes for them and she does things. And, um, and, and then, you know, and even when she is told all this stuff by Katie that, you know, you have no free will, you've got no control, you're going to, you're going to come to Debs tomorrow night. She says, F you, I'm not going to go. And she's completely convinced. But then, you know, this awful act happens and, and she loses her her true love who she has come to acknowledge that she truly loves this person and he goes and she realized that she does have no control and she like uh i don't know it's um yeah it was it, it i think if you think too intellectually about it it's difficult to know how to um to, it would be difficult to know how to play it, but for me, at that point in in the shooting schedule, because we pretty much shot in sequence, well, not completely, but as much as we could, yeah. you know, we did that stuff in the cube. That was the last couple of weeks, and I was, like, completely dead. And um, I think that I just kind of, like gave over to the fact that I also felt like I didn't know what I am or what I'm doing anymore because I was so exhausted that um, yeah. but that's what that's what happened. You know, it, it makes a lot of sense because Lily is so wrung out by the end yeah. and you obviously as the as the actor performing her and inhabiting her were also quite wrung out. Yeah. Pretty intense thing to do. Like TV doesn't always go to this level. And that's what I really appreciated about the show. I loved the ending. I thought it was really interesting that Devs is Deus and it contemplates that the machine is God. It starts making you think about God and religion and you know, sometimes I like to watch Big Brother or whatever, and sometimes I like to watch stuff. You know what I mean? Like it's a yeah, completely. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of the ending? Did you like that maybe there is room for free will after all? Um, I don't. Yeah, I. I've, I guess that's one way to take it. I. I kind of felt that um, Lily's action was always going to be that action, and um, so in that way, it wasn't free will. Yeah. It was it was determined and um but then i i loved the ending in a way because you know she she still got this opportunity to to go back to jamie and and at the end of the day that's what the whole thing was about it was about yeah. her understanding who she loved and why why she loved him and and that was her journey but but then it is sad because you know that's that's one of the many worlds that we see. And like Boris says, there's going to be many worlds where, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't end up with him or awful other things happen. And, and that's really, you know, it's really sad to, to think about. Yeah, it really is. Like you've got children, parents and stuff, you know, you know, there are some uh, worlds in which maybe you never even met them and they never were born. And so we could be here all day um, contemplating. Yeah, yeah. That, we won't do that because yeah we won't do that yeah <laughs> we've touched on this a couple of times but the show is actually quite um effective in terms of the relationships um 
Lily has a great connection with Sergey, but I think the point of the show is that she kind of finds, as you say, a real connection with Jamie, played by Jin Ha. A really great performance that he gives as well. Um, talk us through that working. Well, firstly, both with Carl and with Jin, um, did you enjoy that aspect of the show? Yes, very much. Um, Carl and Jin are wonderful actors and and people, so so it was it was great. Um, and you know, really kind of supportive and and collaborative too. Um, uh, it was interesting because they're also very completely different people, so that was fun and it, it was easy to to use. You know, um, the 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 relationship with Carl was kind of more straightforward because in a way that was true of the relationship with Lily and Sergey. It was, you know, it was on face value. It wasn't, it didn't have the depth that, um, that the relationship that Lily and Jamie had and the history. And that relationship was, it was quite, you know, we spent a lot of time, me, Jin and Alex, talking about that relationship and talking about the dynamics and the kind of the subtle ways in which they they come back together and and where they are in each scene you know how far along are they because um you know Lily has just just experienced this um awful tragedy with her boyfriend so it's not we didn't want to be like oh yeah so that guy that's over and you know moving on to <laughs> moving back to the next guy because that's not what it was about <laughs> yeah. so um so you know we were very careful about about kind of carving the right the right journey for them and um that was a lot of talk about their their history and and you know where they were in each scene and, and you know what a kiss on the cheek meant or what a you know holding touching meant or what staying over meant you know that kind of thing yeah um i want to get slightly superficial before we uh, finish up and apologies if you get asked this all the time but i can't help myself because i was so <laughs> entranced by the idea of seeing back and forth in time right when i first saw that image of christ on the cross and that really grainy image in episode three i'm yeah. not religious at all but i was just like wow this is so cool and then of course i started thinking about what would i want to see and so now i'm always asking what would you want to see if, if at all like what have you given that much thought uh, I haven't, uh, hmm. I mean, I would quite like to see Christ on the cross. I think um, that would be, a, and that would be a good one to see. Um, uh, what else would I like to see? Uh, I don't know. I think we could find out some things about Trump by looking on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. It would, you know. You join the twenty-four hour news cycle for a day, and then it'd be something. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, it's been great talking to you about Debs. Thanks so much for your time today, and we uh, look forward to your next project. I think you're working on something with Kelly Cuoco for HBO Max, right? So hopefully, you get back to production, and we'll see that on our screen yeah. soon. All right. Thanks a lot. Everybody, go to Gold Derby. Make your predictions. Click subscribe and watch all of our great contender chats. Mm -hmm.